أكبر الله. Okay, so the stages of learning knowledge. Okay, the first one was silence. You have to be silent to actually process and learn the knowledge. Number two is listening. Listening is very very important, meaning that you listen attentively. Yeah, you listen attentively. A person can be silent, but his mind is wandering off somewhere else. He's thinking about something else. His mind's stay in the playground, or his mind's in his friend's Xbox, PS3, whatever it is. His mind's over there. The proper process of learning won't take place if your mind is somewhere else. So you have to be silent. And you have to listen attentively. Number three, memorizing or understanding. And in our case right now, is understanding. You can listen. Yes, you're listening. But you have to also understand as well. Okay, you have to understand what is being taught and the content as well. That's very, very important as well. Understanding. And if you're memorizing something, so Quran, yeah, you're listening to Quran and then you're memorizing it. Majority of the cases for science, uh, English would be understanding. For history, it might be memorizing. You have to learn the dates by heart. So you have to understand it while you listen and while you're silent as well. So understanding is taking place within it. Practicing is one of the most uh, beneficial ways. Yeah, you learn something, you put it into practice. That thing you learned will fully be embedded into your uh, brain, and you also you will understand it fully. Yeah, practicing. Now the question might come up: How do you practice English? Like you learn a subject in school. How do you practice it? There's always ways to practice it. For example, it might be English. You learn how to. The teacher taught you how to write a letter, and you practice it by actually writing a letter and sending it off to someone. For history, you've been taught a certain battle. You can play, you practice the battle out, yeah, in a role play or something. Science, experiment, they taught you, okay, this does this, this does this. You put it into practice like that. There's always ways to practice it. And in Islamic knowledge, there are hundreds and thousands of ways to practice whatever has been taught. And the last one, preaching. Yeah, as we mentioned before, 90% of what you learn, 90% of what you learn stays with you if you preach it and you tell other people about it. Yeah, you tell other people about it, your preaching will benefit you the most. Yeah, it benefit you the most. And I've told you about it uh, previously as well. Right now, your students, yes, you will understand. Yeah, you, you have to understand, but only 20-30% of it. But when you become teachers, when you preach to other people, the knowledge will stick to you more. At the moment of time, you might say, okay, I, what, what, we, what you learned two, three weeks ago, you might have forgot. And I don't blame you. Yes, when, when we were students, what we learned yesterday, we will forget it straight away. Yeah. But how do we learn it again? Is when you teach it to other people. You teach it to other people, it sticks in your mind. Yeah. And that's the best and most beneficial way. You're teaching other people.